Hello and welcome back to Come Home Cottage. My name is Larissa. If you're new here, we're happy to have you. Um, today we're going to be making moose burgers for the very first time. So um, it's a recipe that I, I guess it would be my own recipe. I did some research to kind of figure out what would work with moose burgers and we're going to try that out today. And of course with moose burgers, any kind of burgers, you need homemade buns. So I'm making bread anyways, as you can probably see. Today is bread making day. It's all over the counters, all over my floors, and it was all over my socks. So now it's all over my house. <laughs> so anyways, we're gonna be making some moose burgers with homemade buns. If you haven't seen my bread video, I did a whole video on homemade bread, Newfoundland style bread. I had a comment on that video and they were interested in the cheese buns that I was going to do that day but didn't end up having the time. And by not having the time, I mean I didn't have the energy to shred the cheese for the cheese buns. So I just made regular buns. So today I'm gonna make the effort, shred the cheese and show you how to do the cheese buns and show you how those come out because they are just delicious. They're so good. Um, and of course we're gonna make our uh, hamburger buns to go with our moose burgers tonight. So come along with me today in my cottage kitchen and we are going to first clean this mess up. I am turning my frying pan on. We're gonna get some bacon going. So for these moose burgers, we're gonna do up probably about six slices of bacon and I'm not gonna cook them to crispy. I'll just cook them till they're kinda, I don't know, medium done or floppy. <laughs> That's not a technical cooking term, but let's just say it is for today. So we're gonna do up those and then I'm gonna keep the grease from the bacon and we'll cook our burgers in the bacon grease. While our bacon is going, we're gonna get our ingredients chopped up for the burgers. So we have two pounds of ground moose meat, and this is Newfoundland for you, okay? So my parents came to visit last year and uh, called up my Uncle Don and said, hey, you have any moose meat that we could have for supper? So we go over to his house and he brings out this huge bag 
grocery bag of all kinds of moose meat, moose roast, steaks, ground moose. Um, yeah, that we have found the people of Newfoundland to be so generous and hospitable and it's true what they say about Newfoundlanders. They're hospitable and kind and you won't find better people anywhere in the world. So we're gonna throw our two pounds of ground moose meat into our bowl. That bacon is sizzling, so that's good. Okay, so now we're gonna get our the rest of our ingredients in there. So like I said, I did some research. My dad is a butcher, he did some research for me, so we kind of put some ideas together to see what we could do for this moose burger recipe. So I'm gonna start off just to kind of break apart the meat. Oh, it smells good in here. It is the most beautiful day. It's about minus three outside, I think, so it's pretty cold, but I just had to, I had to open my window when I was doing the dishes because it was just, oh, the sun was coming through the trees. It is so beautiful. And I love a cool, a nice cool breeze. So the wind was coming through the window. I was doing dishes in hot water. It was nice. Who said you can't enjoy winter? All right, I'm gonna wash my hands and we're gonna get the rest of the ingredients in here. Okay, so our seasonings, we're gonna do one teaspoon of salt. One teaspoon of ground pepper. I'm just gonna estimate. I'm not good at estimating things. So this could be, I mean, my salt and pepper shakers are not the best. Not a whole lot comes out. Okay, so that's one teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of ground pepper. And I'm gonna try rosemary and sage in this moose meat. So I did some research and rosemary and sage uh, could go really well. So I think I decided on for two pounds of meat, I decided on half a teaspoon of rosemary. I wonder if that will be enough. Hmm. Maybe three quarters of a teaspoon of rosemary. I'm gonna change that on my recipe. Because I've got two pounds of meat here, I think three quarters of rosemary might be good. And sage, sage is so such a powerful uh, spice, so I don't want to I don't want to overdo it. So I'm gonna do one quarter of a teaspoon of sage, and I think that's gonna be just enough to give that a bit of a kick of flavor and to complement the wild flavor of the meat. So we've got that. And next what we're gonna do is we're gonna do some onion. Now in the summer, I grew a really small garden in a really small planter. Um, and I got some carrots and some onions. My onions were pretty small. This is the last of it. This is the last of my onions.
from my garden. I don't know if you can see that, if it matters. You know what an onion looks like. You don't need to see it. So that was the timer for my bread. I'm just gonna let that sit for a few more minutes while I chop up the rest of the ingredients for the meat. So I'm gonna use the last little bit of onion that came from our garden last summer. I'm just gonna dice it up. I think I want a little bit more onion, so I'm gonna cut up maybe a quarter of this onion here. We don't do too well with a whole lot of onion uh, for us, but I think if you want to add more, you can certainly add more if you're going to make this. And same thing with the garlic. I'm only going to put one clove of minced garlic in our burgers, but if you love garlic and you can handle a bit more garlic, I'd say go ahead and put as much garlic as you want. Use your own discretion. Oh my goodness. My eyes, the onions. Okay, so the bacon is looking pretty good. I turned it down, but I might turn it back up just a little bit. Let that sizzle. There's not a whole lot of bacon grease in there, but we'll leave what's in there for our burgers. That bacon is probably good. I'm gonna take, actually, I'm gonna take that off. I'll leave that. We will chop that up once it cools down a little bit. So I've almost got that onion in there. I'd say it's probably maybe a, just under a quarter cup of onion, I think. Maybe one eighth of a cup. And I don't really like big chunks of onion in in burgers or anything, so I'm just gonna chop it up as finely as I can. It doesn't have to be perfect. I hope this works out. I'll link the recipe in the description box. And if I need, if I find that there's needs to be some changes, I will add those as well. And if you, I know I have a few Newfoundlanders that are following along with my video. So if you are a Newfoundlander or if you just know how to make moose burgers and you can give some tips, give away your secrets, you can comment down below and I, I'd love to see them and I'm sure other people would love to see that as well. Give away your family secrets. That's a big clove of garlic. I'm only gonna do half of that, I think, for us. But like I said, if you love garlic, you go ahead and put in as much as you want. That's probably the size I'll end up with going into the 
mixture. I'm just going to mince this garlic as small as I can. Mmm, that smells good. Okay, now we've got our ingredients in there. Oh, I need to add breadcrumbs. I'm gonna add breadcrumbs, I forgot to add that to my little recipe here. Breadcrumbs or oatmeal. Maybe I'll do, let's see, I do have some breadcrumbs in the freezer, but. I do. So I have some breadcrumbs in the freezer that I had made up from some dry bread. Um, so I think I'm gonna put maybe one eighth of a cup of breadcrumbs for the two pounds of moose meat. So I got a quarter cup here, so I'm just gonna do half of that. So that's a, that's a really good money saver. If you have dry bread, instead of throwing it away, you can dry it out. And I just put it in my food processor. I'm sure a blender would work too. And just blend that up, throw it in a freezer bag, and bring it out for times like this when you need to add it to burgers, meatloaf, whatever, whatever else you use breadcrumbs for, I guess. Desserts, I don't know, do you use breadcrumbs and desserts? I have no idea. Now moose meat is pretty dry um, and lean. So the bacon, the idea of the bacon is that it's gonna give it a bit of taste and fat to bulk it up a little bit. Not the healthiest recipe, <laughs> but I hope it turns out really good. So we're going to mix this up with our hands. Goodness, this smells good. Got the garlic, all oh, the garlic smells so good. The rosemary, the sage, I can smell the sage and it's not too overpowering. So I think, I think the, what is that, quarter teaspoon we did? I think the quarter teaspoon of sage is just enough. Oh, and that rosemary together with it. Mmm, that smells so good. Okay, let's see. Oh, that smells good. That smells good. 
I hope, I hope there's enough salt in there. Um, I don't know, but what did I do? I did one teaspoon of salt. Yeah, that should be good. So I'm going to cover this because my bread is ready to be rolled into the pan and then we'll come back to the moose meat. We'll let that just kind of soak in the flavors of everything that we have in here and then we'll get back to making those burgers. My dough turned out a little bit more wet today. I think what happened was I was FaceTiming my mom and she said, oh, I'm making bread today too. So I said, let's make bread together on FaceTime. And she said, oh, okay. <laughs> and so we were chatting and I think I missed putting in four cups of my flour while I was chatting with her. So you're just gonna roll your dough into a little ball. That's probably a bit, a bit big. Um, I'll show you another one, but I'm not gonna be too picky with these today. And then I butter any kind of pan or dish that goes in the oven. But that's kind of the joy of FaceTime. My parents live in BC and being across the country that's kind of how we connect, usually FaceTime. And we're the kind of family that we will just, we'll just sit on the phone and <laughs> kind of be part of whatever's going on around us and kind of like we're hanging out in each other's living room. And then they'll say, oh, Larissa, are you still on the phone? And I'll be like, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just listening. But that's kind of the nice thing about family, right? So that little lump there, and I'm just kind of pinching the bottoms, throwing it in my pans. Really, like I was so intimidated by making bread uh, that I didn't do it. I didn't learn for years. My mom tried to get me to learn Every time I went to her house, she would try to get me to learn how to bake bread. And then she came to Newfoundland uh, a few months after we moved here. And she said, now you're gonna learn how to make Newfoundland style bread. And I said, okay. <laughs> but honestly, like if you're, if you're wanting to learn how to bake bread, but you're intimidated by learning the process or how it's gonna turn out, can I just encourage you that it is, I, I think I built it up in my head to be a bit more complicated than it really is. And it, it is a bit of a learning curve. You kind of have to get used to it and practice will make things better as with anything. But I think I was a bit, I think I was surprised that it's not as difficult as I made it out to be. And you can do it. If it botches the first time, you're still gonna get some form of bread. Even if it's too doughy or too dry or whatever, you're still gonna get a form of bread that you can eat or throw in the toaster or whatever. So give yourself some grace and let yourself enjoy it because baking bread has brought me so much joy and satisfaction. I can't tell you, I can't tell you how much. Okay, so these, oh, did I show you? Probably not. These are our buns. They're looking already pretty roly-poly. I'm gonna cover them and I'm gonna let them rise for 30 minutes and we'll come back to it when we're ready to put them in the oven. So I wanna show you now how I'm gonna do the buns for the moose burgers. And basically, I'm just gonna take, I don't weigh my dough. I think it would be a probably, it would probably be a lot better and more accurate if I did, but I'm just gonna, I don't know. I'm just gonna figure it out. That's probably, that will be a big bun. That might be too big. I'm gonna cut a little bit off. So it's the same thing if you saw how I rolled my, the buns in the bread video I have. 
If not, that's okay. You just roll it into a dough, pinch the bottom, roll it against your palm. And for the hamburger buns, the difference is what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flatten it because I don't want my buns to be very high. I want them to be pretty flat, like a hamburger bun. Okay. So I think that's gonna be number one. And I just lined, usually I would do them in a dish with butter. I'd butter a dish and put the rolls in there or the buns. But because these hamburger buns are just, they're just flat, it's just gonna be easier to put it on some parchment paper and it's easier cleanup for me too. My, bun, my bread is a little bit sticky, so I'm having a hard time flattening these hamburger buns to make them look nice. But they're probably not gonna, they're never gonna all be the same. That's just, that's kind of the nice thing about homemade too is you're never gonna have one perfectly the same as the next because you're not making them in a factory. You're making them in your own kitchen with your own hands with your own ingredients, it is so rewarding. I think I'm gonna do six, I'm gonna try to fit six on here. Okay, so there's our hamburger buns. I think those are gonna turn out pretty good. I'm gonna cover these, they're gonna rise again for another 30 minutes. So for the cheese buns, I just have marbled cheese. Okay, I think that's enough cheese for the 12 buns we have. You really don't need a whole lot. That's probably a bit too much, but that's okay. Can you hear that? The bacon fat is sizzling. So we're ready to get our moose burgers on. I might turn that down just a little bit while we get our, while we get our burgers in there. I wish you could smell this. This smells incredible. I think that was perfect. The sage and the rosemary along with all the other stuff, I think is gonna be a really good combination. So I'm hoping it works out. So I think we're gonna, I'm gonna make about five burgers for tonight and the rest I'm going to flatten and throw in the freezer. These are, nothing I do is truly uniform. <laughs> so I'm just gonna flatten that. Oh, that one looks like a little heart. I'll give that to him, to my husband. I don't know how flat I want these to be. I don't know. Huh? 
This is really a big experiment for me. Um, I don't cook with moose meat almost ever. <laughs> and I don't make my own recipes. I think that I think that bacon is really good. There's a clump of bacon right there. I think that's gonna really add to the flavor of mo the moose meat and help fatten it up a little bit. Okay, so I'm trying to make them all at least the same thickness. can't help myself. I'm going to add just a tiny little bit of salt on each one. couple more maybe one more minute So some of the pink spots um, I thought were uncooked moose meat, but I think it's actually um, some of them here are is just the pieces of bacon. So bacon is already going to be kind of pink even if it's fully cooked. So I'm not too worried about that now. See, there's a piece of bacon that came off. Oh, that smells incredible. I think they need another minute. So I've turned these off now and they're just gonna uh, finish cooking up and that cheese is gonna melt nicely on top and then they should be ready to be done. Here are our hamburger buns. These turned out beautifully. I'm really happy with how puffy they are, but they're not too round. They're perfect size for our burgers tonight. And here's our cheese buns. I put a lot of cheese on there. You don't have to put that much, but those are beautiful as well. So I'm gonna get some butter, melted butter on those right away.
Okay, so we've got our burgers done. And our buns are done. Our buns are still warm. I couldn't help myself. I'm gonna dig into one of these and I will let you know how it goes. Here we go. That's mean that I'm eating this in front of you, but that is so good. If you can get your hands on some moose meat, ground moose meat, I'm gonna link the recipe down in the description box for you. This is so good. A lot of people don't like moose meat. Um, not a lot of people, I just, if you're not used to it, some people don't like it because it's got a really wild flavor. Um, and like I said at the beginning, it can be a little bit dry because of how lean the meat is. But I'm telling you, if you put some bacon in there and those little spices, Oh my goodness, you're gonna absolutely love this. It is phenomenal. That doesn't look very appetizing. <laughs> I wanna thank you guys so much for watching this video. And if you're interested in any more of my videos around homemaking, um, homestead, and simple living, there will be a video that will pop up here. Um, you can also go to my channel and there'll be some more videos there for you to watch until I post my next video. I'll be posting every Thursday, so you can look forward to a new video from me once a week. And everyone who has uh, commented, subscribed, watched my videos, thank you so much. It really means the world to me. I really appreciate it. I'm so happy to have you along um, on this journey as I discover new things in my kitchen and our little home here in Newfoundland. Thanks so much and have a great week.